one of the fascinating things about serving in public office is to um, come across and understand the various perceptions and realities that people have or their version of reality. And uh, I admit that prior to my service, my tenure in uh, public government is, you know, I would have been, I was the same. You know, I had certain preconceived uh, notions and conceptions about uh, government, about policies, certain things that are passed. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a completely different world being on the outside of government looking in and being in government and having to receive those that are uh, looking in. And, uh, <clears throat> for instance, uh, uh, right now we're having uh, a big uh, debate, if you will, in town. We are building a uh, new uh, water plant, multi-million dollar water plant. And uh, and there's uh, financial issues, as with most any town, of how things are going to be properly financed. And amidst this, we have an urban renewal uh, project that we are trying to get formulated and to move ahead on. And so amidst all the uh, financial uh, uh, debate, uh, we have, you know, the urban renewal and how that's going to be financed, which is a completely valid um, thing to debate. And so every little action that uh, the city council does is going to be automatically scrutinized and um, looked at. Again, that's just the way it is, and, and uh, I accept that. That's the American way of doing it. Uh, The problem that I have is that, let's get some exposure here, there we go, the problem that I have is that as real and as uh, rightly people have an opinion and are passionate about it, especially when it uh, relates to their taxes, their hard-earned money. <clears throat> And I'm a taxpayer, too, on a very limited income. And so I'm right along with everyone else on this. But the struggle that I have with this in is that, uh, boy, we're getting some, uh, some clouds coming in and out. i got to find a new place for this. Anyhow is that people will come to the council meetings, okay? And they will, oh, I'm getting tired of this. Anyhow. And they will be very passionate about uh, the issue that they came for. At the same time, they are so often unwilling to come at other times to find out why a council felt the way they did or why the council voted the way they did um, before they got so passionate and irate about what it was they're upset about. So, you know, my... My pet peeve, if you will, is is that as much as I love people, we, including myself, need to become a lot more involved with our government, whether it be local, state, or federal. If we have a problem that we 
don't understand or can't comprehend or or no matter how much we feel uh, the officials are out of touch how much of how much of that blame can we bring upon ourselves because we didn't go and sit in on the public meetings when they made certain decisions because isn't that the only true way that we are going to be able to um, come to a true answer as far as how decisions are made or why certain decisions are made um, it, it just it just makes it all the more difficult when we do have certain meetings, public meetings, where you know your very passionate subjects are going to be discussed. And it makes it all the more hard to come to a consensus with the people when passions run so high when they don't need to be. Because if people understood how decisions came to be by attending, being more involved in the government by attending earlier on, then they wouldn't have all this contention in their heart. They wouldn't have the uh, the notions that they have that I used to share. Um, you know, <laughs> being in government, you come to realize that by and large most of your resolutions are going to have pros and cons to each side and in many instances it's going to be a juggle and which one is going to land in your hand and which one is not uh, and it, it, it's it can be very difficult for a an elected official to use the best judgment to understand the immediate needs of the community, state, whatever. At the same time, it is a public official's duty and responsibility to look towards the future, to look towards the growth. And that, I think that's one of the problems with... Um, the passion I was talking about earlier is that when we have meetings where feelings are very, very deep, very uh, abrasive, it's usually because of the answer they're getting now. I don't like this. I want it changed. You're going to be imposing attacks on me right away. Or, or, this is a faulty and corrupt government. I'm being, uh, I'm being persecuted, whatever it be. And so, we have to, a public official has to take that into consideration. Has to take the immediate needs of the community at heart. And, but... Oftentimes, when you are running your adrenaline and your blood off of passion and emotion, there seems to be a brick wall that prevents you from seeing beyond it, from seeing uh, an outlook, if you will. And uh, that's part of the problem again, because it creates a division by a, a city council that's uh, doing its best to uh, look towards the future growth of a community or a uh, state, if you will, at the same time balance the economy of the here and now. So, it, it, you know, if nothing else, I guess the uh, purpose of this video which is obviously going bright and dark, bright and dark. Um, 
is to hopefully educate people to better understand the government that they approve of or disapprove of. And the only way that you're going to do that is to become engaged in it, to attend the public meetings, which by law, I hope in most states, there has to be a public notice of it, you know, that, you know, this public meeting is taking place at such and such a time at such and such a place. And so that is the only way that you're going to have a true, sound, reasonable judgment of those in the elected uh, positions over you that you have placed there. Otherwise, you're going to hate every single government that perceives it, no matter what political party, no matter what color they are, no matter how much money they have, you're not going to like it because we are all individuals. We are all people. And no two people are going to live out their lives liking every single decision that the other one makes. There will always be those times when decisions are just going to rub the other guy wrong. Okay? And when that happens, fear and suspicion creep in. And you get false notions. You get uh, false ideas. And this person is on the receiving end of it wondering why you hate him because you used your judgment to uh, bring about a certain result that you saw fit. Now, one last thing. Uh, and I've talked about this in other videos, but everyone needs to understand that no matter if you're the head of your household, whether you be the father or the mother, whether you are of status in a company, whether it be a boss, supervisor, a lead, whether you are an official in the community, whether you are elected, appointed, same goes on up state, or regional, county, federal. These are all, for lack of a better word, these are all enlightened and uh, ordained positions. Okay? In other words, we live by a rule of law and order. And Having order means that with each step of the ladder, that step, that rung, is entitled, so long as they have sound judgment, they are entitled to certain inspiration, knowledge, and enlightenment that the other rungs preceding do not have. And cannot have. That's why we elect people to make certain decisions. Is because we, whether it be consciously or unconsciously, we know that that rung has a certain judgment that requires the knowledge that they can, they only they have. Okay, and so you know that's a very hard thing to explain, and probably an even harder thing to accept. But it's also one of those things that in your heart, you know it's true. Because that's the basic part of society. That's the basic structure of who we are. And so, I just hope uh, people are more aware of the government they uh, are subject to. And so, that's my lesson for the day. Sorry for the lighting.